Another international issue that requires global leadership and thinking is climate change. Right now, about 145 million people live less than three feet above sea level in countries like Bangladesh, China, and the Philippines. And scientists predict the world's oceans could rise five to six feet by the year 2100. By the end of this century, worst case projections have parts of Boston and Manhattan underwater. In the remote Pacific nation of Kiribati, it's already happening. Homes have been swept away by the rising seawater. Seth Doan visited the island nation, where the government is already making plans for its demise. This fragile place is on the frontier. The island nation of Kiribati is in the South Pacific, just over the international date line. It's among the first countries in the world to get a new day, and scientists say it's among the first countries in the world to really feel the effects of climate change due to melting glaciers, rising sea levels, and extreme weather. This idyllic remote place doesn't seem like it's on the front lines of anything, but when it comes to climate change, it is. We wanted to go someplace where climate change was real. Climate change so often seems like this long-term, long timeline issue where we're talking about sea level rise over something like a century. And we wanted to find a place where it was a, a clear and present danger. Kiribati is really on the front lines of climate change. It is, scientists say, one of the first countries in the world to really feel effects of climate change, sea level rise, and really one of the big concerns is extreme weather, which exacerbates things like high tides and, and creates real destruction. So much of, of Kiribati is threatened in, in the coming decades and century. You look at a huge percentage of the country is just a few feet above sea level. So this idea of sea level rise caused by climate change and the threats because of that are very real. What happened here? As you see, the sea wall is broken. There was a sea wall here? Yes. And now it's just flooded with water? Yes, flooded with water. It can be hard to recognize sea level rise when you visit a place for the first time. You start to appreciate it, though, when you hear from locals who say, my house used to be right over there. My home right in, right in the middle of the water. Your home was there? Yes. We heard that a number of times, where people's houses had been closer to the water, they had to move back. One woman told us, I used to be in a community of 10 or 11 families. 10 or 11 other homes were around me, but those people had picked up and left as the water got closer. It's interesting, we visited a school in Kiribati where for these students in school, climate change is not some academic subject. For them, it's real. What goes through your mind when you think about climate change in your own country? I'm afraid and scared. Afraid and scared? I'm worried. Afraid, scared, worried. Those are frightening adjectives. <laughs> There are really more questions than answers when you talk about climate change here. Students say they think a lot about their future, they have a lot of questions about their future. When you think about the future of Kiribati, of your country, what do you see? You mean that our island will disappear? Your island will disappear. Is there skepticism about climate change in Kiribati, just like there is in America? Yes. You might wonder how people in Kiribati could be skeptical of something that many there say they're seeing, they're experiencing. But the skepticism goes up to the very highest levels, right up to the president of Kiribati, who says we have other more pressing things to worry about, namely jobs and the economy. You might be wondering who people in Kiribati blame for climate change. It was a question we kept asking. Climate change is this big, issue with this long timeline and it, it, it's a squishy issue. It can be hard to tell exactly what's caused by climate change. One woman was very reluctant to tell us. We kept pushing her. I know they're going to hate me. It's okay. America, United States, 
She said, I can't blame Americans for wanting products, for wanting cheap things, often you know, manufactured in developing countries where it is cheaper to do this work. She said, but for, for you Americans to have your nice things means that more carbon emissions, you fly on big planes, you drive big cars, and that all has an effect. And you might not see the effect in America, she tells us, but we will feel the effect here. Life is pretty simple in Kiribati. <laughs> One gentleman we were interviewing told me that he was concerned about the idea of moving to another country because in Kiribati you didn't need much money to survive. Nature provided. I want to stay here and die here because this is my, this is paradise. And he said he was concerned that in other countries he would need more. He's used to nature providing, but the irony now is that nature may take away. May, nature may flood out these coastal communities. One of my biggest takeaways from this trip was visiting this country, Kiribati, which scientists say is on the front lines of, of feeling climate change, will be one of the first countries in the world to really uh, feel the effects of climate change. But in Kiribati, some had not heard of climate change and many had some of the lowest carbon footprints in the world. These are not people driving gas guzzling cars or flying on airplanes or even buying a lot of products that have been produced, but these are the people who are feeling the effects of all of that, who are on the front lines of this issue of climate change.